Calling the regular city council meeting, uh, March 19, 2013, to order. And I'll use the mic. <laughs> okay. Would you all join me in the Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Our first order of business is the consent agenda. Roll call. Roll call. Sir. Oh, sorry, roll call. Mayor Milton. Here. Council President Henderson. Here. Councilor Grant. Here. Councilor Folsom. Here. Councilor Butterfield is absent. Councilor Langer. Here. Councilor Clark. Here. Thank you. Now. Consent agenda. I'll move oh. it. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Presentations. Our first presentation tonight is an Eagle Scout recognition. And before I get started on this, I also want to recognize our past mayor who I failed to recognize last time. <laughs> and he would never start a late meeting. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Caleb, you want to come forward, please? And sit at the table and explain what you did to get your Eagle Scout. Uh, push your button up. There you go. All right. There you go. I uh, built mail slots for the police, the transit police department, the Chamber of Commerce, and the mm -hmm. Historical Society, and it took about a hundred man hours to make. Wow. What did you build? There are wood slots. It's like a, just mail slots made out of wood. Mail oh, slots. Oh, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Wow. Did your father help you at all? Somewhat. <laughs> How many slots were there, and where were they installed? And uh, they just, I didn't really put them anywhere. I just gave it to them, and they decided to put them. There's about 36 in each one. Wow. So you, you went, and so they go into their buildings, and it's their personal mail slots. Yeah. Right. Were you That's all cool. 100 of the man hours? Did you have some I had guys some help. Helping? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, between that and the trash pickup on the Tualatin. <laughs> did, you, did you partner with somebody for materials or? Uh, no, I got most of them donated. Yeah. Just private parties or you went to businesses or? Uh, business. Okay. Sweet. Okay. Anybody have anything else? Well, we want to present you with a certificate achievement, and we want to thank you for coming down here and explaining it, and thank you for giving your time to do something for the city. It really, they really do appreciate what you've done for them. Thank you. Mark, that's going to take a picture. <laughs> if you start that, I think they're just going to go forever. <laughs> Is Julia Bush here? My next presentation is the National Community. Oh, excuse me. We'll do the Greater Portland Inc. presentation first. Tom? I'll try this one. There you go. So um, uh, Derek Olson is here um, from Greater Portland, Inc. Um, Greater Portland, Inc. is a, as, as Derek will explain in more detail, is, um, is a group that is focused on economic development for the Portland region um, and is a fairly new group and doing a great job. Um, uh, we're a part of a small cities consortium of the Greater Portland, Inc., so we've teamed up with I think 10 other cities um, that are small cities that make a contribution to be a part of the board um, as well as a part of the group that allows us to do um, more in economic development than we could individually. So um, Derek is here to tell us some more about that and um, more about the exciting opportunities that are going on in the region. Thank you. Should, should be up. 
Oh, sorry. Okay, I had the wrong way. Excuse me, uh, Mayor, Council Members, my name is Derek Olson. I'm uh, Vice President for Regional Strategy and Coordination with Greater Portland, Inc., and I appreciate the time tonight to be able to present. Um, it's something that we're doing with all the cities that are, that are active partners in our, uh, in our organization, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about our group, and I'm happy to answer any questions, so please feel free to interrupt me at any point along, along the way. Um, Mary, uh, we had a chance to talk a little bit about this uh, when we had the uh, um, our CEO gave a presentation for the Washington County Mayor's uh, meeting that uh, Beaverton Mayor Doyle hosted, and so it was nice to to uh, see you there, uh, Mayor, and, and have a chance to talk briefly on that. So, um, just first of all, what we are, Greer Portland Inc. is a uh, economic development organization. We're a nonprofit that, uh, as uh, Tom was saying, came about, but uh, from the merger of a public organization and a private organization almost two years ago. We represent uh, the Portland Metropolitan Statistical Area, which is seven counties, five in Oregon and two in Southwest Washington. And of those, um, there's a host of cities and counties that are active members, including, as Tom was saying, Sherwood in the, what's called the Small Cities Consortium, which um, allows to have a, a tiered uh, membership rate based on population so that uh, we encourage all sizes of cities to to participate. And again, the idea really is together um, we can do more uh, than we can individually and uh, we are all about economic development. We're about uh, business development. I'll get into all the details on, on recruitment, retention, and pro regional economic development uh, projects. We're not a think tank. Uh, we're not a policy organization. We don't do advocacy or lobbying. Uh, all we do is economic development. Um, we're a small, small organization, about seven or eight people, um, uh, but together uh, we can we can leverage a lot of the the resources in the region, and um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about that tonight. So first, I want to give you just sort of the context that we see ourselves operating in, and that is um, it's a global economy, where the fastest growing parts of the economy uh, worldwide are not in the United States. Uh, and uh, so that's a challenge for us. And so when we compete, we're not just competing as the Portland region uh, against, you know, Seattle or Boise. We're competing against San Antonio, uh, San Juan, Singapore, you know, you name it. And so that's the context we see ourselves operating in. Uh, secondly, that um, while we value all kinds of jobs uh, and they're important contributions in the economy, our focus is on what's called trade sector jobs. So jobs, given our limited resources, time, budget, and this is similar to what the state does, uh, Business Oregon, we focus on traded sector jobs. So jobs that um, produce goods or services that can be sold outside the region, whether another state or internationally, which then bring income into the community that support the retail jobs, support the service jobs, tax base, and everything. Third, um, what we're doing is, while it's relatively short-lived here in, in Oregon, as, as mentioning uh, our organization, I mean, Portland area, our organization is less than two years old. This is something that many other major metros have been doing for 20 years. And other metros within the state, such as Medford and Bend, have been doing in an active way uh, for many years. So we're a little bit late to the game, playing catch-up. We think um, because we're teaming together and we have a lot of strengths, we'll, we're, uh, we're doing well. So we have three sort of major parts of work that we do. One is business development, uh, which includes both recruitment and, as well as retention and expansion of existing business. Second is marketing and branding of the region, again, not just domestically, but internationally. And then uh, the work that I do is uh, regional strategy and coordination, and I'll get into what that we mean by that. Business development this is really the heart of what we do. We, um, first of all, we work to recruit companies to this region and pitch why this region is competitive and is the place for their business to land vis-a-vis -vis other parts throughout the world, uh, or especially in the western part of the United States where, uh, where a lot of uh, folks are, are, are looking to expand. Um, it's not a strategy to get companies to up, up, uh, you know, uproot and move, because that rarely happens, with, especially with larger companies. Sometimes small and medium-sized companies do. Um, but uh, it's a focus a lot on companies that are looking to expand and convincing them that the Portland area is a good place to expand. So, uh, and I'll get into some of those examples here in a minute. It's focused around the, the four clusters, which where the, the lion's share of the traded sector economic activity 
and strength is, and that's athletic and outdoor gear and apparel, high tech and software, which includes uh, uh, semiconductors, uh, advanced manufacturing, which is a very wide territory, anything from transportation equipment to food processing, uh, you think lean manufacturing, uh, and then clean technology, which again includes both manufacturing and services. They're fairly broad clusters, um, and we help companies in other areas as well, but this is where we see the lion's share of, of the, uh, the work. This is just a, a breakdown of uh, the, what we call the pipeline, which is just um, sort of an informal way to describe the deals that we see flowing. These are potential recruitment deals of companies looking at expanding to this region or significant retention and expansion deals. So companies that are already in this region that could choose to expand somewhere else and we're trying to get them to expand here locally. And as you can see, and I won't repeat the percentages, but um, it's broken down uh, with similar to what we mentioned, what I mentioned the four major industries are, industry clusters, with a significant exception, I guess, of bioscience. We've seen some interesting medical deals, and I'll mention one uh, here when, we, when I highlight some uh, on the next slide. So examples of, of work we've been involved that, that um, you've helped make possible uh, and that really benefit the whole region. Uh, you know, first a small one, and it, this we consider retention and expansion. This company, which is based in the Netherlands, but has um, had an office here in Portland, High Tech Sports. They had a boot facility that was down in California that they opted to move up. They're looking to move, and they chose Portland over other regions, and sort of consolidating and growing. And again, a lot of that reason is because we have such a strong. Uh, supply of talent in this area in the outdoor gear and apparel, you know, whether you're talking Nike or Adidas or some of the smaller companies uh, like Keen or Leatherman or others, um, it was attractive to them. Uh, on recruitment for companies that, that did not have a presence in the region that we were actively involved in these deals working with the state and localities on, one is Catalyst RX, which is a healthcare benefits company um, that is bringing approximately 300 jobs to the region. And then the biggest one was Salesforce.com that you might have seen in, in, in the Oregonian. Uh, and again, this is one where they're not, we're, we never suggested that they move and they're not planning to move wholesale here. They're looking to expand. And so they're putting, um, uh, and they just selected a site in Hillsboro, uh, about 500 jobs in the region. And again, going with what Tom was saying, the philosophy of, of we can achieve more by working together. Um, you know, none of these, uh, or at least at the moment, are in the Sherwood area, and yet there's probably a very good chance that some of your residents uh, or your taxpayers are working at some of these jobs. It's similar to uh, Intel. Uh, in in uh, there's a story that I that always sticks with me. Bill Wyatt, the head of the Port of Portland, was giving a talk in front of a business organization in Vancouver. And he mentioned, you know, that Intel is the fifth largest employer in Clark County. Well, Intel has no facilities in Clark County. And it's because there's so many people, you know, transit from Clark County to uh, Hillsborough to work for Intel. And so, um, and that's really the, the approach we take is that um, we represent the entire region and we're, we represent, uh, we hope to help the company find the best site for them. And uh, even if it's not in your jurisdiction, there's a good chance it'll provide employment opportunities for, for people who live in your jurisdiction. So this is, again, first 18 months or so. These are the, the three major deals that we've been involved. I and mean, there's been other ones that are ongoing in that pipeline that haven't yet landed. Uh, our marketing and branding is ex it, uh, tied directly to our business development work. So when we pitch the region, it's a little bit different than, say, a tourism organization or uh, you know a, a, a chamber. Uh, it's specifically... Uh, to tell a story to a company about why it would make sense for them to do business here. And so we've done profiles of business leaders in the area um, and had them tell the story about why they like doing business here, what are, the, what are the advantages. And these are just a couple of the examples. There's a lot more information on our website. And so we um, managed uh, Alaska Airlines, for instance, last fall was doing, they rotate who they profile, and they did a big uh, profile on the Portland area including something, uh, the export initiative, which I'll mention in a minute. And so we bought advertising along with that that profiled uh, a company, a high-tech company, talking about why he chose to do business here and, and, and the advantages of it. And uh, the thought being that that's, uh, you know, in the hands of, our, uh, of uh, folks traveling up and down the West Coast where we continue to have a lot of strength of companies, especially from the Bay Area 
or the Puget Sound area expanding uh, to uh, to have a facility in, in the Portland area. Uh, and we just, uh, if you get a chance later, you can look at our website, Greater Portland Inc., and it, and it links, for instance, to the uh, City of Sherwood website, um, and it, it has uh, facts and figures on the area. It has marketing materials. It's designed specifically to help uh, site selectors who are the consultants for companies looking at uh, expanding. It also talks about opportunities uh, for regional grants and opportunities for, for companies already in this area can benefit from. So that link to Sherwood, what's on that link? It links to uh, the, the, the City, City of Sherwood uh, website, I think to the economic development okay. page. Yeah. You bet. Um, and then uh, just and then wrapping up, uh, the regional strategy and coordination work, which is what I do, kind of pulls this together. Uh, so if the heart of our work is business development uh, and the marketing is tied to that, the regional strategy and coordination is, is explicitly working with all the cities and counties and uh, utilities, ports, and other economic development organizations in the region to share best practices on how to do this work and to work together on regional grants and initiatives. So um, there's, uh, for instance, something called the Jobs and Innovation Accelerator Challenge Grants, which are two large federal grants of this region one, which companies uh, in Washington County and, and Clackamas and Multnomah, as well as Clark and some of the other outlying counties qualify for, uh, so this is for companies in the area can get, can get funds for training uh, or market research uh, focused on the advanced manufacturing and clean tech. And so uh, we do monthly uh, best practices, which uh, Tom and his colleagues have, have been to uh, repeatedly where, to talk about, you know, what are these opportunities? How do you help connect your local businesses to these opportunities? Uh, you know, what are some of the things that, say, Gresham is doing that, that might be helpful to do, you know, in your city? Um, and it's really, uh, you know, again, the, the whole idea that, um, that by sharing this, the whole region will benefit. One of the things that we're specifically working on, and I'm spending a lot of time on, is something called the Export Initiative. The Export Initiative is a, a four-tiered strategy to try to, uh, it's a big goal of trying to double exports from this region from uh, 21 million, excuse me, 21 billion to 42 billion uh, over five years. Uh, it mirrors the National Export Initiative, which you might have heard uh, President Obama talk about in, in, the, um, in the State of the Union. We're one of four pilot cities with uh, the Brookings Institution, a DC think tank has selected us, Los Angeles, Syracuse, and Minneapolis to try to work with localities and businesses to try to tackle some of the problems that are out there. And so uh, we, and I won't go into all the details, I'm happy to in question and answer, but working with uh, professionals like Tom, we're, uh, we're trying to do training for local economic development officials so they can better work with companies on exporting. We're um, working to try to get local companies in the supply chain of larger companies like TriQuint and Intel in the computer and electronics. We're working to help uh, with the Port of Portland map out some of the transit problems that affect specifically freight that then slow down um, uh, growth in some of those areas. And there's a whole host of other ac activities. Um, and, uh, but it's, and here's, the, here's the, the stat I was telling you about. And, and again, this, the reason we're focused on the, this and the reason we're doing it and I'll end up here is because it's all about jobs. And that's primarily what we're focused on. And exports, $1 billion in extra exports is 5,400 jobs. And it would take us a lot of work to recruit that many companies. I mean, those are large ad additional companies if you were to recruit that. And so the idea is if you can work with the existing companies, help them to access state and federal services, help them to connect with larger companies in the supply chain, help to market this region, then we can do our part to raise exports and then grow jobs. And I kind of ran through that fast, but I wanted to, to keep your respect your time, so I'll end there, and I'd be happy to answer any questions um, that you may have about this or other topics I didn't raise. Thank you. Thank you for coming tonight, because um, I've always kind of wondered what Great Important Inc. actually does. Um, so I have a question. Um, our area is obviously unique, and I know you've worked with Tom, and one of our areas that one of the reasons that makes some development or job creation in this area is transportation challenges. So if you're not a lobby group and you don't lobby, how do you work with those agencies like Metro or ODOT sure. 
to sort of bring those issues when you talk to people who may not be here, right. but who might want to be here, and those are their big challenges, or that's an issue for them that can't see locating perhaps in the Southwest corridor area. H how does that information get disseminated right. up without necessarily looking like a lobbyist, I guess? Council President Anderson, uh, what we we do it in a number of ways. One is that we have um, from the economic development professionals, which Tom and myself and others meet with, we have a representative on the Metro Trans uh, Technical Advisory Council who represents sort of the economic development uh, professionals in the area to provide some of that. And uh, so the the representative is from Oregon City, and the alternate alternate is from Wilsonville, so they understand a lot some of these issues in, in the area. Um, Secondly, Metro President um, Tom Hughes, former mayor of, of uh, Hillsboro, mm -hmm. chairs our export initiative. Um, so our leadership, we have a sort of a C-level group with um, that, that Council President Hughes and um, uh, an Intel corporate official uh, co-chair. And that, so for instance, when we bubble up a study on mm -hmm. tra transit problems on the west side for computer electronics, uh, folks, that's going to go to the council that includes uh, Council President Hughes, Intel, uh, you know, several other uh, key mayors uh, or, or other officials that themselves then are involved in transportation decisions. Okay. PBA, the Portland Business Alliance, for instance, who is very active in lobbying on behalf of economic development, right. is on our board. And so they, gotcha. they'll take some of those ideas and integrate them in. We're also involved with um, the uh, Value of Jobs Coalition, which has, uh, has a lot of uh, studies and efforts. So it's a, it's a fine line, but we are, we're careful to you know, kind of do the work and, mm -hmm. and let some of the other groups then see how that might need to change policy or change uh, spending decisions or other 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 uh, impacts. Okay, thank you. I just wanted to thank you for the economic summit last fall. Oh, we went, and I was pleasantly surprised that it went really fast. It was interesting right. and informative, and I really appreciate all the work and efforts that you're doing because I do think that that synergy is going to help, and I think it's already helping. Right. And you mentioned that some of those um, businesses in the recruitment pipeline might be employing um, members of our community. And Linda had leaned over and pointed out that they do. We have a mutual <laughs> friend. So, and he had been out of work for quite some time. So we're grateful Great. for those processes and see them on a personal level. Well, well thank you, Councillor. I appreciate that. And as a resident of Twalton, who's, and my, my wife used to manage uh, Mud Puddles, Toys, and Books, so I'm very uh, <laughs> intimately uh, you know, uh, involved in this community of family who live in Sherwood. And so I... Um, and our staff is from throughout the region. And so we really uh, do see the benefit in the whole region. Um, and so while it's greater Portland, I mean, it really is the region. We are agnostic as to where um, jobs land. We just want jobs to grow in the region. Right. And um, I think that helps us because it gives us the ability to do things like host that summit. We're, in fact, already planning for the next one, which is hopefully going to be in, in October. And um, so that we can do things on behalf uh, of the region. Do you um, go out and meet with individual companies we, that um, may want to, you know, expand or that may be not really exporting internationally mm -hmm. um, as opposed to hiring some high-priced, no offense, right. consultants right. to come in and tell them how to do that, sure. but kind of learn what other companies have learned mm -hmm. through the process? If you want to double exports by 2017, there are probably companies out there who could export right. but don't necessarily have – the technical, you know, employees in place to get that um, system going for themselves. Council President, that's a good question. Um, we do uh, both uh, meet with companies directly and then work uh, through local jurisdictions. So, for instance, on recruitment trips, we often represent the region, you know, at a, at a trade show or, mm -hmm. or a, a recruitment effort where we might have uh, representatives from the region uh, for instance, we were just, uh, my, my colleague was just up uh, in, in, the, in the Seattle area, was down in the Bay Area, and it was in Germany, again, on behalf of the, the region, meeting with companies. Locally, we work very closely with localities, so we wouldn't go in and meet with a company without coordinating with say, Tom or his counterpart in another city. Gotcha. On the export initiative, specifically, what we want to do is be able to give Tom and his colleagues uh, training, and that's something we're going to be doing over the course of the summer so that they have some of the tools to be able to talk to companies um, about exporting uh, and bring in resources from groups like the Oregon Manufacturing Extension Partnership, the Small Business Development Council, 
and other free or low cost services to companies. I mean, there's a time and a place for for um, you know outside talent, uh, uh, right. you know, consultant, lawyers, etc. But we try to help companies connect with all the free or low cost uh, first, especially for small, medium sized right. businesses. Thank you. You're welcome. Tom, did you have some to add? I, I just wanted to thank Derek for, for coming out and, and just uh, you know thank Greater Portland Inc. For, for all they've done. As someone who's new to economic development and this stuff, they've been a great resource for me, and I think they're a great resource for the city. Um, we definitely have some things that we need to work on, but it's through the efforts and through the information that we're gathering through that um, initiative that we're, we're going to be able to make ourselves much better. So. And we do have meetings. Uh, the mayor representative is currently the mayor of Tualatin, and uh, they have about monthly or bi-monthly meetings that you attend, and sometimes mayors go to. Yeah, certainly. Also, all the uh, um, economic development professionals get together on a monthly basis. But we're also the small cities consortium. The eleven cities that I was talking about um, have started to get get together on a monthly basis, basically just to work together to make sure that we're being effective. And more importantly for Lou Ogden, the mayor of Tualatin, make sure that he's being effective, representing the cities on the board and making sure that um, that uh, that information is getting passed to the region from our from our interests. And if I could say that um, that that really gives a great access for for the small cities consortium, because the mayor Ogden is on the board with, you know, our, our the head of the board is the CEO of the standard. You know, Mayor Hales from Portland is on there. Uh, there's a lot of high high level officials, and so it's great because he can talk specifically to the needs and interests. And, and so I would encourage you to you know continue to work as you have to share that information. And we're actually meeting with them uh, next month so that we can make sure that we're responding to whatever concerns or questions or issues, um, uh, so that it's equitable. And then we're not just working with you know larger cities. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Council. Appreciate the time. The next item of business we have on here is a pro uh, proclamation for Community Development Block Grant. This is National Community Development Week, April 1st through April 6th, so it's not right yet, but it's coming up. I'd like to read just a part of it. Uh, it's, whereas the Home Investment Partnerships Home Program provides funding to local communities to create decent, safe, affordable housing opportunities for low-income persons, nationally over 1 million units of affordable housing has been completed using home funds. And whereas since the program's inception, our community has received a total of $2,228,482 in CDBG funds. Kristen, would you like to comment on that? Um, well, what I can say is I think everyone's aware of our most recent project, uh, which will be the improvements over to the senior center, mm -hmm. the uh, lobby and the restrooms, and we're out to bid on that project right now. So we should be um, proceeding in another three to four weeks. So very exciting. Any questions from Council? How long is the construction expected to last? We should be done by the end of June. And will there be alternate access through the back of the building? Through the side <laughs> door? Right. Yes. That, so. that side area? That's correct. What Kristen probably doesn't is not telling you, and I will tell you, is that she wrote this grant. Mm -hmm. She's written all the grants, and she keeps getting money. So we appreciate it. Thank you. And I saw the presentation last year, and it was she just did a great job, but... The senior center pretty desperately needs this little face. Yes, yes, very much so. So we're very excited. Go ahead. I serve on the community development block grant committee, and um, I've only been to um, two meetings. But if anybody ever has any questions or wants to come along, Councilor Grant did it in the past, and and it's actually an ongoing process that involves low interest loans, as well as uh, um, a large chunk of HUD money, which of course is is unknown for the next mm -hmm. fiscal years, um, and so everybody's very concerned. Um, and um, even the community development block grant program at Washington County is concerned about their own funding too. But um, we meet once a month, and as um, Robin said, Kristen has been very successful, and we have, you know, received a lot of dollars in our community, and um, 
it's a wonderful program that is spread out across all services and disciplines and neighborhoods throughout Washington County. And uh, it's quite a task to go through that list and rate projects and then come up with a list. You know, you always have more asks than you have money, um, but eventually they, they give out the money as best they can every year, and every year there's new projects. So um, just wanted to let everybody know if you've ever liked to go, you can tag along. Anyone else? Citizens' comments. Did we get any citizen comments requests? Did anybody out there not fill one out that would like to talk and now fill it out now? No? <laughs> Next is the city manager and staff reports. Well, uh, Joe uh, Gall started a, a new tradition of introducing uh, new employees, and so I'd like to take a minute to um, recognize uh, Ashley Graff. Ashley, why don't you stand up? Um, why don't you come up here a little bit so everybody can see who you are? Ashley is uh, interning with us. She's actually sp uh, splitting her time 50-50 um, with West Lynn, so she's here 50% of the time or 20 hours a week, and at West Lynn, 20 hours a week. Um, she'll be with us for about six months. She's working out of the city manager's office, and um, Joe was kind enough to let me have the first month's worth of her time. And so I think Ashley probably just had a, a light bulb moment as she realized why I'm asking her to work on our web page and um, work <laughs> with uh, Weird of Portland, Inc. Uh, in regards to economic development to get some featured properties up there. One of the things that uh, Greater Portland does is they um, have uh, each jurisdiction can do five to six properties um, and that are um, industrial related and, and put them up on the website so they get uh, national and international exposure to try to do things. And we haven't taken advantage of that. So Ashley is currently working on doing that for me as well as um, uh, going through many different cities' web pages and making our economic development page um, uh, much better than it is today. So um, so welcome, Ashley, and, and it's nice to have you here. Can we ask her questions? Oh, of course. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> not that easy. <laughs> We're actually nicer than Westland, though. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Um, what is your degree going to be in? I'm getting my Master of Public Administration degree from the University of Kansas. I'm from Lyons, Kansas. All right. Are you a Jayhawk or? Well, Walk I out. was in the day. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? No? Well, thank you for coming tonight. Thank you we for the opportunity. We look forward to seeing the new website. Yep. You'll see it soon. It's going to be good. Uh, um, that uh, was the only reports that I had tonight. Council announcements. I just have a quick report from the Cultural Arts Commission. Um, our uh, chair has changed. We'd like to thank Doug Pedersen for his years of service. He was fabulous and did a great job. But Elise Vordemark has now taken over as chair. Um, and as you saw tonight in the consent agenda, we have added uh, yeah. two new members to our commission and one of those names might be very familiar to you she is our former human resources person and now that she's a citizen she's excited to serve the other member amanda stein is stand away she uh, lives in old town she is an amazing music teacher we had the opportunity to hear a student of hers last year who won part of the sherwood's big town mm. small town talent show and she's um got a great ideas and energy and so we're very excited to have those additions to the commission, and I think the commission is up and moving in a very good direction. So, and I apologize for the traffic. I have volleyball on that night, and I couldn't get back in time to get to the meeting. <laughs> it was crazy. So, but it's, uh, they're going great. And if we still have another opening, is that correct? All right. So if you have anybody who's interested, we'd like to have some more members. Linda? Uh, I don't know if anybody's noticed, but this is our new Archer. Should be home in your mailbox. Um, new improved, as the website will be, right, Ashley? Um, and um, I think that Joe uh, and staff should be commended. I think it, it's a, it, and it's orange, by the way, some orange. Um, but it's a very nice, uh, has articles from every department. It has a calendar in the back that's an actual calendar about what's happening. And there's a little bit of overlap. It goes from mid-month to the next mid-month, which might be a little unusual for people. But um, I 
I think it's a, a good system to have in place because that comes out at the first of the month and, you know, covers the first part of the month. So um, look forward to that. Um, uh, counselors will, and the mayor will be having articles um, monthly, so look forward to reading those. And my second uh, announcement is I had a request from the library board. Um, we meet every other month, so six times a year, and we meet usually in this room, but there are nine members, and nine members can't sit all up here. And they have asked me if it would be okay with the council or if anybody has any concerns with moving back into the boardroom because they actually see each other. It's a little bit more collaborative and they can all sit together at the table. Normally what they do is they have to spread out. And so I, um, as their resource said, I would bring it to council. And if anybody has any concerns with that, they'd like to start meeting in that room as opposed to the dais. When we meet, we don't have mics on, we don't record, we don't take any video, um, and we usually only have a couple of people who come to the meetings, and if they do, we'll just, you know, invite them to the table at the time that we have for council com or for uh, library board comments. So if anybody has any concerns with that, if you could just let me know. Um, and if we move in there and it doesn't seem to work for some reason, then we'll move back out here. But there, There's no conflicting meeting going on? Nope. Well, if there would, then. Yeah. But it, we meet on a Wednesday night every other month. Oh, that's so. I told them I would bring it to the council and see if anybody had any concerns or objections. No concerns Bless or objections. You. That's your decision. I just want to make a clarifying statement. Ashley's working on the economic development web page, not the entire uh, web site. <laughs> although I like no, the way I you know. think. No, I like yeah. your no, way no, 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 no. I, I knew really you were talking idea. about. So we'll, yeah. we'll take that under yeah. advisement. I mean, we knew because when when, yes. when they commented, when Greater Portland Inc. commented about the website, we looked at each other and said, "Uh oh." <laughs> yes. Yes. Did you see that? Uh oh. <laughs> so what I, the compliment is is that the new website. I think. I mean, the new newsletter has more information, more valuable information that's in a way that people can actually use it. Um, and hopefully that website will be, you know, <coughs> the same, more user-friendly. And so thank you. That's all I have. I was just, I was just going to um, comment that uh, Main Street is still having their weekly meetings during construction on Wednesdays at 4 um, if anyone would like to, no, no, I'm sorry, 11. Sorry, I switched it. Switched it with our other meeting. General meetings at four. So, sorry, Wednesdays at 11 o'clock, uh, Rebecca Hall. Um, so if you want, if anyone wants to attend and hear the updates on the construction that's going on in, in Old Town, um, you're welcome. I have a few things. Uh, I went to the Mr. Bowman contest Saturday night. That was a lot of fun. Had a good time. Uh, the good Mr. One. Bowman this year. I, gosh, I wrote it down. Uh, Devin Donahue won this year. And they raised just this year $40,116 wow. for Dorn Becker Children's Hospital. So they did a great job. And over six years, they've raised over 115000 So it, it's a great event. A lot of fun. Uh, the other thing is I met at AJ's for my monthly mayor's meeting. I was surprised how many people were there. And uh, I was going to talk to Bill Butterfield because half his office was in there. And, uh, <laughs> for the meeting? I, well, uh, no. <laughs> but we did have a meeting. But I'm going to next month, I think I'm going to do Clancy's. I can't remember the date. I'll, I'll let everybody know. But it was a lot of fun. We had a good time down there. So other than that, uh, I don't have anything. We're going to adjourn the council meeting right now.